All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am joined by Leslie M, who is in Toronto in Canada. How are you doing, Leslie? I am so good. So happy to be here. I know everyone says that, but I really am. I'm not lying. Yeah. And Leslie is a former TV host and advertising creative director turned training guru. And she spent decades uh, traveling around the globe with her award winning company Combustion, working with executives and teams from top organizations like Google, Disney, PepsiCo, etc. And today we're going to be talking about your book, Swagger, right? Um, this is so interesting. I'm so glad that we're talking about this today. Uh, Swagger, unleash everything you are and become everything you want. So let's just back up for a second, Leslie. And what was the genesis? What drove you to write this book in the first place? I spent all of these years working with organizations all around the world. And it didn't seem to matter the country, the culture, the level of person, um, CEOs down to new entrants. What I discovered was that at their core, people did not believe that they could reveal who they really were and still achieve the success that they've been dreaming of. They didn't believe that they were good enough to get all the things that they wanted to and had to put on this false front, this false persona um, in order to, to succeed. And I, I know this to be patently untrue, the opposite is in fact true. The more you can step into who you really are, the more you find your power and your differentiator, what makes you special and magical, and what will ultimately bring you success. So when I discovered this, I became a woman on a mission to unleash the swagger in every human being on the planet. That's excellent. So let's talk about swagger. So for most, for many people, maybe swagger, they think about swagger as maybe overconfident or cocky or whatever. Um, mm. But what's your definition of swagger? I fully redefined it. What you're talking about is the old swagger, bad swagger. Yeah. No one wants that swagger. No one should <laughs> appreciate that swagger. Let's put that swagger to bed. My mm. definition of swagger is the ability to manifest who you really are and hold on to it in the face of all of that psychological crap that's going to come for it, regardless of the situation or environment. So it means you got one face, one truth, one heart, and you show up with it no matter what's going on around you, no matter who you're with, or no matter what challenges you're facing. And that swagger. And let's face it, right? Those those psychological uh, derailers that are going to show up. I mean, a lot of them are generated by ourselves. In fact, most oh, of them are generated yes. by ourselves. So when you talk about, so what is, what's stopping most people from unlocking their authentic self and really living out and having the confidence to be who they really are? I... I've identified some some sort of commonalities. I mean, each person is unique. I hate generalities. Mm -hmm. sure. Sure. Everybody's got their stuff. But I have found that when you pick through it, you know, you, you pull back to the root cause that there are five kind of fundamental issues going on. One is persona, the belief mm -hmm. that they have to walk and talk and show up a certain way in order to be taken seriously and have credibility and to be accepted into the tribe of their organization or their, their community or whatever it is. The next one is ambition. You know, everybody wants to succeed, but ambition has a way of changing us. And mm -hmm. we get really fixated on that external validation that ambition or success provides that it screws us up and, and makes us, you know, hold back the parts of ourselves that are that are Im perfectly imperfect and flawed and human and messy and beautiful. And we only want to show the world the shiny part of us. It can be as a result of insecurity. All of those, you know, those old tapes that are playing in our mm -hmm. heads saying, you're not good enough and bad things are going to happen to you and you don't deserve this and whatever, whatever ever messages we heard across our lives that have taken root and and kept us in this place of churn because there are no answers in insecurity there's just lots and lots and lots of questions you know um or it can be fear it can be 
that the answer to the what if, you know, what if I don't walk, talk, behave a certain way, fear is going to tell us bad things are going to happen. And that fear part of the brain is trying to protect us. But that part of the brain can't differentiate between I'm going to speak up in a meeting and a tiger yeah. is going to eat me. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so it holds us back and it feels so visceral and powerful to us, but it's really just a state of mind. It's not real, you know? Um, and the last one is pain because pain is is memory it's proof that oh i tried that one time it did not mm -hmm. go well hurt like a you know what and i'm never doing that again and even if the context has changed even if we're different even if we're older more experienced more more powerful we still have that memory of pain and as humans we like to move away from pain <laughs> and towards sure pleasure to the best of yeah. our ability. So we're not going to go there again. So and, and then there's lots of nuances mm -hmm. in between those things. But I found those to be the real hardcore reasons why Swagger has such a hard time being released into the world. Yeah. And just going back in a couple of things you just said there, um, the first one is where you're talking about getting into the persona. And I think sometimes people, I think this is where a lot of the imposter syndrome and that comes mm, from, because you yep. start thinking that I have to create a persona instead of sort of, I have to grow into my actual persona. Mm -hmm. You're not creating a fake one, you know, you're growing into the real one. But as you said, when people start to start to make those changes or start to try and, and be who they really are, then they start then they are conflicted with the imposter syndrome saying, so, well, well, who am I to do this? Like, I really don't have the qualifications. I really don't have the skills or people don't really take me that seriously. Well, listen, those are the stories we tell ourselves and we yeah. have, we have full command over what stories we tell ourselves. So I always say to people, listen, you are not your history. You are the stories that you tell yourself. And if you tell the story to yourself that you're a badass who is at a certain place in their journey at this time, and you own it and accept it and don't try and be further along than you are or don't don't negate all the work you've done to get where you are then you can be really strong and powerful where you are today and i think there's way too much onus and pressure on this whole idea of you should come across as being five years ahead of where you are or what hey excuse me what, how exactly can I do that? And that's actually dangerous, first of all. And second of all, who's kidding who? We all start from a place of nothing. We all start from a place of, I have no freaking idea. And so the, this, this pressure that we put on each other it's almost like we've forgotten that we lived in that place of of uncertainty and growing and you know and building confidence at some point. And that, you know, now that we're past that point. We, mm -hmm. everybody else shouldn't feel it's like no we are all human and that's that's the part of the human condition and that's part of evolution so we need to be way kinder to each other about that process yeah. just like be where you are own where you are in your journey and get on it you know yeah no absolutely i mean i always feel good if i'm not more than a couple of months behind where i should be right you know, i think that's that's pretty good going i think I don't uh, even know where I am half the time, you know, because I well, try not exactly. to measure myself against other people. So I am where I am. It is like it is what it is. So, yeah, you, know. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting point you raised there, though, about not measuring yourself, because this is something I often mention on this podcast about, you know, I'm 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 big into martial arts. And one of the things that I like about martial arts is that uh, there's always going to be somebody bigger, stronger, faster, younger, more flexible, whatever it is. Right? There's mm -hmm. always going to be people who have better things than you. So when you when you do martial arts, your goal is not to be better and measure yourself uh, against the person on your right and your left. It's measure against yourself. Are you are you progressing yourself? Are you better than you were last week, last month, mm -hmm. or whatever? And exactly what you're talking about here is the external validation piece or compare or the comparison piece, which is so pervasive in the world we live in today. If you can get away from those and start to focus on your own development, it makes such a big difference. Oh, yeah, because when you do that comparison thing, it's it's an absolutely imperfect science because mm -hmm. you would have to measure absolutely every aspect of your entire life, every experience you've had, every challenge you face, every advantage you've had, every, every, everything in order to say, I should be somewhere other than where I am right now. So it's an absolute waste of time. And for every for every person will say, well, I'm I'm further along than you are. You could turn around and say, well, let me tell you what I experienced that you likely didn't along the way. And when mm -hmm. it when you know when when I'm lying on my deathbed, 
What are the things that I'm going to appreciate? The fact that I made project manager at uh, 34 or the fact that I spent more time with my kids? Which one mm. of those things is going to be valuable to me? So it's a fallacy and we just need to say, what do I want for myself? What fills me up? What's going to sustain me? And we got to learn how to internally validate, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. you know, you, 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 you like frozen yogurt. So it's a random question. We'll give you the analogy. Do you like frozen yeah. yogurt? Are you a fan? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm a big fan. Big fan. So you know when you go into that frozen yogurt store and you go to the back of the room and you, first of all, you can pick the cups off the wall. You pick the size of the cup. I always pick the big giant one. And then yep. you go to the machines, the big silver machines with the giant white handles. And you decide what, mm -hmm. you know, what flavor you're going to pull, how much you're going to put in your cup, what weird combo of things you're going to put in. Are you going to include that random watermelon sorbet that they always put at the end, you know? Yeah, no. And then once you've <laughs> filled your cup in the way that you want with as much as you want, then you go over to the toppings bar and there's the gummy bears and then there's the chocolate sprinkles mm -hmm. and the coconut and the, you know, the, the bubble tea little balls and stuff. And you put a little something, something on top of your froyo and it's beautiful. It's perfect. <laughs> Here, the, that wall of frozen yogurt is internal validation. You decide mm -hmm. how big your cup is. You decide how much and what combination of things you need to fill and sustain you. And that toppings bar is external validation. It's a little something, something, because who doesn't like a little sweetness, yeah. a little gummy bear, right? I'll take it. You know, someone wants to say nice things about me. I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> but you, but I, but you don't go into the Froyo store and go directly to the toppings bar and fill up your cup with gummy bears. Because if you did, you'd, you'd have a sugar crash two hours later yeah. and you'd be empty. And that's what happens mm. to us. You know, we mm. need to go, I decide what the measure is. I decide what what fills me, what satisfies me, what 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 denotes my power, what what is my place of purpose and how do I share that with people? And then if you want to say nice things about me, awesome. Yeah. But if you don't, <laughs> meh. Yeah. No, I love I love that. I love that piece and about I love about the piece that you just said about knowing or owning your own purpose because I do think that that's probably what holds a lot of people back is mm -hmm. they've never asked themselves, why am I doing what I'm doing? What is my mm -hmm. purpose? Why am I doing? And even if you're in the job, afraid to. Yeah. I think they're afraid to, because what if the answer is, I'll, I'll know. Yeah. You know, you, like, then you, you go, oh my what? God, I've been working so hard towards, I've been rushing towards dead here. You know, I've been working <laughs> towards, I'll know. Yeah. Or, right? or, or what you might discover is that you're doing what is expected of you. Yes, which and that's the, exactly why that's been your exactly, choice. Yeah, that's exactly why swagger is so important. Because once you once you discover your swagger, you start to go, hey, wait a second mm -hmm. here. This is not for me, you know, and this is not for me and I am not for everyone. And that's OK. And it's time for me to do and be what is right for me so that I can be better for the collective and better for the greater good. Because that's when we're at our happiest, our most powerful is when we're tapping into all of the things that are weird and idiosyncratic and special and unusual about ourselves as opposed to working so freaking hard to assimilate into the Borg. <laughs> and then we wonder why we don't get noticed, you know, why yeah. we don't stand out. No, I, that's a great point. And I think on the fear part, too, is I think there's there's, you know, there's a there's a great fear of if you decide to be your authentic self or and maybe, yeah, you want to develop, um, you know, the swagger you want to get on, you want to be successful, you want to be all of these things. But you're kind of afraid how that's going to be perceived by maybe the people who you've surrounded yourself, because maybe mm -hmm. you're stepping out, you're being a little bit different than you normally than you normally are around them. And sometimes those people will be supportive and sometimes they won't be. Mm -hmm. So there's a choice for you, too. Yeah. And I think you the decision that you're going to have to make is. Do I want to get the acceptance of everyone based mm -hmm. on inauthenticity? Or do I want to get loved and accepted and respected by a select few based on who I really am? Yeah. Because the other one is a fallacy. It's, it's, it's an mm -hmm. illusion. Because you, you tell yourself the story that this is how you're going to gain acceptance and validation, except they're not accepting and validating the real you anyway. So yeah. what's the point? You know, you might as well, you got nothing to lose. 
other you know to other than to to step more into who you are and see who really does love it because how amazing is it when people go yes i see you yes that's amazing that's gummy bears up the yin yang you know <laughs> and and we know that that we are you know we if we have people around us in our lives who love and accept us they may be the people, friends we've had since fourth grade or our family we know we are fundamentally lovable and worthy mm. of love you know and uh, worthy of acceptance and i think people don't give that enough credit they're looking for this bigger this bigger manifestation of of what love and respect and acceptance is i go oh whoa whoa start with the start with the people who know you best yeah. because if they feel that way about you then who's to say that other people wouldn't they these people have known you longest and best they know yeah. the quality of your heart and your mind and so if you could you know be so brave as to show that to other people it's a gift, you know? And, and the thing that creates connection between us is when we show other people that we're perfectly imperfect and beautifully flawed yep. so that they can go, oh my God, me too. <laughs> You're just <laughs> like me, you know? And everybody drops the front. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And then when you talk about actually, you know, uh, developing developing this the swagger and stuff, one of the things you, you talk about is intention. And I think this is an incredibly important um, piece just to highlight for, for our, our viewers and listeners, because so much is done without intention. Um, a lot of times people don't show up with intention or they don't, they don't have intention or they don't understand the meaning of intention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, the, there's three fundamental drivers of swagger and that's truth mm -hmm intention and self-belief and they have to go hand in hand because you cannot run around spouting your truth with your hair on fire I'm, you must speak my truth yeah. and you must hear me because no one's got time for that and no one's interested we yeah. we as human beings we care about ourselves first so in order for us to care about other people's truth there has to be something in it for us that's just the way that we are so when you're speaking your truth you want it to land that's the purpose of speaking it otherwise you're just you know you're peeing in the wind yeah. there's no point in doing that right so um if you're going to speak your truth you're going to have to frame it in such a way that that it is good not just for you but for the collective and the, and the greater good mm -hmm. And the way to do that and to make sure that you're not be, being a self-serving, you know what, and and using it as, a, you know, authenticity as an excuse for being unfiltered or uncensored, yeah. you need to be super crazy clear on your intention. What is it that I'm hoping to accomplish here? And you've got to check yourself, but hard, you know, because swagger is not just about taking up more space in the world. It's about making the space that you take up more valuable. Yeah. you know not just for you but for the people around you and you're you have more generosity of spirit you have more you know you have more patience for people you are you are more willing to give of yourself all of those good things because you feel so damn good you know you feel so mm -hmm. damn good and so centered but if your intention is to make yourself bigger in order to make somebody else smaller eh, 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 it's not gonna work yeah. it's not gonna fly you know yeah not gonna work no no absolutely and and i think the other part too is as you mentioned there is if you're doing it if you're doing it purely for your own benefit and you're 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 trying to develop this you know outsized persona or or whatever uh i mean correct you're not be you're not being authentic um but the other part is as well is that you're just going to you're going to drive people away from you if you mm -hmm. don't have if you're not coming at it from the right uh with the right uh mindset and the right intentions because you know, that's the last thing anybody wants is so suddenly somebody to be as you say using the old swagger instead of the new swagger yeah and remember that swagger manifests a hundred percent differently in every individual it doesn't come across as i mean we we still we, you know when we when you say the word swagger it just it has a way of conjuring up this extroverted you know overly confident you know showboat and mm -hmm. you can have a massive amount of swagger and be completely introverted or intellectual or geeky or playful or goofy or or you know serious however you are that's how your swagger will manifest It'll, it, it'll just be what's real for you, but you will still be so, so irresistible to people because they'll yeah. understand that when they, when they are with you, what they see is what they get yeah. and that 
You're not playing games with them. This is just who you are. And if you're introverted, trust and believe that if you have swagger, people will lean into you. You will not mm -hmm. have to fight for airspace like you might have used to. People will yeah. go, oh, wait, tell me, oh, wait, everyone, shush, shush. John has something <laughs> to say, shush, you know? <laughs> And because because you're radiating that that self acceptance, mm -hmm. which which then radiates self assuredness. Yeah. Now normally they just say shush, John. Just, <laughs> just, they don't say shush, listen to John. They just say shush, John. Let somebody else speak. Um, but the uh, the other part too is that you touched on as well is um, uh, being your authentic self. As you said, it's not it's not just that doesn't give you carte blanche to be obnoxious either. No, because no. Uh, and and because I always love the when 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 somebody says or when people say oh well you know the person who's always late right oh well you know me i'm always late i'm so blah, blah. And, and I that go, is well, not no, your swagger that's unprofessional yeah no it's unprofessional but you know what yeah. i mean those people are just say oh well you yeah oh well you know that's just me and i always say well if that's if that's just you well that's a crap version of you okay yeah so how about you get a better version <laughs> yeah or that's how about if you just be respectful of other people yeah you can yeah. you can be whoever you want but but respecting other humans is non negotiable. It's it's yeah. to me it's like the get in card for humanity. Mm -hmm. It's like don't give me the excuses about why you're an a hole. I don't want to hear about it. It's not that's not what swagger is. You get your swagger yeah. card revoked. Yellow card yeah. for the swagger. You don't <laughs> you don't get that. It's not it's not allowed. That's why intention is so important. Because I will call people on their intention every time. If somebody if somebody is snarky or somebody calls somebody out, I'll go. Excuse me. What was your intention with that comment? Right. I don't have to get mad. I don't have to fight back. And I just very calmly say, okay, so what was your intention with that? What what did you hope was, was going to happen as a result of that comment? And people usually like, oh, right? Because they, you know, it's the best way to check somebody. You do it with, you, with compassion and you even pick your moment. You don't have to do it in front of everybody yeah. else. You can wait till the meeting's over and then go around and say, hey, question, what is it you were hoping to accomplish? there because I might be able to help you find a better way to achieve that because I don't think that I don't think that landed so well buddy you know <laughs> I love that I'm going to use that one yeah what was your intention yeah, what was your That's intention excellent but you got to make sure there's no snark in your voice you got to be really careful yeah. you got to like fix your <laughs> yeah. face you know like because I box too right in boxing yeah. when you know when we spar and somebody yeah. pops you and you gotta that my, my yeah. coach goes fix your face fix your face yeah. like, <laughs> you know, I know I do a bit of boxing too yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Boxing is always good for fixing your face. That's right. Uh, well, listen, um, Leslie, this has been fantastic. The book is called Swagger, Unleash Everything You Are and Become Everything You Want. And you can see the books behind um, Leslie there. All of Leslie's information is going to be below the video, all the links, so you'll be able to find out more. But before we go, Leslie, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Um, I spend my days uh, as a swagger coach. So if you're looking for some help or support to unleash your swagger, I'm the girl for you. We'll have a lot of fun too, because I'm a little bit of a nut bar. Um, uh, you can find more about what I do as a speaker and a swagger coach and an author at lesliem.com. You can also check out more about the book at swaggerthebook.com and for sure come and play with me on social media because while I take what I do extremely seriously, I don't take myself quite so seriously. So I'm on Instagram at, at Leslie M Speaks and uh, LinkedIn at Leslie M. Love it. Thanks. Uh, this has been fantastic, Leslie. Uh, my name is John Golden. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.